Hey guys, it's Lisa here. And in today's video, I'm going to show all of you how to create the class app or hubs that many of you have been spending a lot of your hard earned money on. After watching this video, you'll be able to make your own for free. And all of you know my motto, if it's free, it's for me. And I promise all that I'll ask of all of you is to just click the subscribe button so that you don't miss my future videos. Now, here's an example of one that I have already done in Google Slides. And you know, you can do something similar to this using Google Sites. Um, but personally, I think that Google Slides is not only easier for many people to use and navigate, but it's also more fun because you can add more creative touches to Google Slides that in Google Sites, you're kind of limited to specific uh, themes or colors or where you're able to put things. So I'm just going to demonstrate my app quickly. Okay, so it says Mrs. Masriego's class app. You can call it a hub. Basically what it is, it's just a, a, a cute place for parents to enter or even older students, if maybe if you teach high school, they could do it by themselves or middle school, to go and to find homework, to maybe sign up for uh, parent-teacher conferences or if you need volunteers for an upcoming event. Uh, you can do a million things and I'll give you a list. I'll show you the ones that I have done here. Um, I put contact information, homework, important dates, permission slips, event sign up and school website. Now, you can put a lot of other ideas on here. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you a, a list of, that I came up with of, of other topics that you could add. If you make your little buttons smaller, you can actually even fit more on there. And you know, like I said, the possibilities are endless with Google Slides. So um, let's just check here. We have our contact information. Okay, so there I am. There's my fake work phone, my fake school email, my office hours again, and then it'll bring me right back to the menu. And I have all these color coded. So homework is orange here all the days of the week. So now the parents can go on and they can see what homework their children were supposed to be doing. Okay, go back to the menu, my important dates. So don't forget things like back to school night, school events like class dances, days that you do not have school, those are always important. Okay, we have permission slips here. And you can really put, you can call this forms if you wanted to. So any forms that come up. And you know, if you have a permission slip that you send home, a lot of times they don't make it home. Students lose them. So instead of printing a million copies, you can just simply just put all of those documents and link them to here. So it just says click on the Bitmoji below. And when you click on it, it brings you to my Google Doc where parents have a view only um, access and then they're able to just print them and they can send in their own permission slips if they lose the first one. Okay, to go back to the menu, um, this one I'm very excited about. I don't know if many of you know, there is an app, a website rather called Sign Up Genius. There you see my little 3D Bitmoji here. I do have a video to show you how to get your 3D Bitmojis onto your Google Slides. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But here, um, it's a sign up. Like I said, you can use this for more than just volunteers for school events. You can also use this for your parent teacher conferences if you want them to sign up for specific times. And again, it's called Sign Up Genius. It's free, of course. You know, if I'm, I'm showing it to you, it's gotta be free. And you're able to sign up, have people sign up for preparation. You see, I need five people. They can click on the time, okay? Um, this is really great. And then you'll have access to see who's, who's signing up for the specific times or specific things. So registration for the dance or cleanup afterwards. So it's a really, really great website. So let's go back. Um, and then here you can put a link to your school's website if you want, or your district's website. Um, me just for fun, I just um, linked it to my YouTube channel. Okay, so this will bring you right to my, my YouTube channel here. Okay. And now let's get down to the nitty gritty and I'm gonna show all of you how to do this yourselves. Cause I really don't like that people are paying a lot of money to do these when you can do them yourself, you can have them exactly the way that you want them to be and you don't have to spend a dime of your money. Okay, it's summer vacation. You should be using that to treat yourselves. So here, um, I'm just gonna add a slide and I wanna take all this stuff out. 
All right, so I have my, my blank slide here, okay? And the first thing that I did was I just I just put a, my background color to be black. Uh, I did that because I wanted to use like the bright fluorescent colors. So after here, all I did was I just added a shape. So I went to my little shape icon, I put a square. Okay, I'm not gonna make it fill fill my box yet. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to fill color and I'm gonna make that transparent. And I'm going to color the border. So what I did was I made my border this bright pink and I changed the border weight. I think I made it 12. Yep, that looks good. Okay, now you see, and then I'm gonna end up stretching that. If you want, you could just leave it like this. That actually looks really cute. Um, and then if you look, I also have the green dotted line. So all I did for that was I can control C and control V, or if you're on a Mac, you can use command. And then I just changed the color to this neon green. And then I went here where it says border dash and I chose the third one down. Okay, and then you're just gonna line them up. Okay, so now you see, got that cool look to it. So if you're wondering how I did that, that's how I did it. Okay. Uh, and at this point now, um, I also have my stars here. And all I did for that was I went to Google, you can go to Google images. And I'm going to type in rainbow stars gif. Oh, not goth. You want gif. Okay. And then from here, you just wanna click on the, the GIFs just to make sure that they're actually animated because sometimes they're not, okay? And I think this was the actual one that I, I used. Um, so just gonna right click and then save image as and save it to your computer. And then all I did was I went to my slide, I went to insert image and I uploaded from my computer and I had saved that as, I believe that was the first one, stars. So that'll pop up in a second. Okay, and then I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna go to order and I'm just gonna send that to the back because I want that to be in the back. Okay, and then I can stretch it as much or as little as I want. Okay, and that's how you, I gave it like the pretty star look. Uh, now, what I'm going to show you is, is the button, okay, because I have a lot of these throughout my app. So in order to make the button, all I did was I went to, again, the shape. Okay, you can also go to insert and then to shape. Literally, it just does the same thing. There's multiple ways to do a lot of things. And then I'm going to click the little circle here that says oval. And then you're going to make your button whatever size you want. Okay, and I do not want it dashed. I want it a solid line. Okay, and then I'm gonna to go to my fill color and I want to fill it with the color as well. Now to kind of give it that 3D look that you see here, make it actually look like a button. All I did was click on it. Okay, I went to format and format options. And then over here, you'll see something that says drop shadow. So I clicked on that. I'm gonna change the drop shadow color to the same color of my oval or whatever shape you decide to do. You can do rectangles as well, okay? And then I just moved my distance. So it's a little far away from the original shape, okay? And that's all I did. Then you can just left click twice double click okay and then you can write whatever you want i wrote enter on mine okay you can then go to the three dots come to where it says align i want mine centered okay and then i can bold it i can increase the font okay i can change the font i really love this architect's daughter it's, it's one of my favorite fonts Okay, and there, there's my enter button. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to the first slide to show you then what I did. Uh, obviously, if you if you look over here on the left where my, my, my slides are, you'll see that my menu is on slide three. 
So that's where I'm gonna want this button to take me. I wanna make sure that this button takes me to slide three. So if I click on the button, you'll see it pops up as slide three. I'm actually going to remove the link because I want you to see what's gonna happen. So if you click on it and you right click, you're gonna see it says link. When you click on the word link, you can either put in a link here or underneath it says slides in this presentation. This is what you're going to want. So once you click this, there, there's slide three. Okay, I'm going to hit apply. Okay, now just to show you that this works, if I pop this into present mode and I click on the button, because that's what we linked it to, that should bring me right to slide number three, which was the menu. Okay, so that's how you know it, it, it actually works. Okay, um, just a word caution, make sure that when you're making these, I know you saw here on this page, I have these transparent shapes and I layered them to give myself this dotted look around the outside. Make sure that those are in the back. You want only your button in the front of your, your transparent shapes. Okay, because otherwise when they click on them, it's just going to go to the next slide and it's not going to go to the slide that's linked. Now, if you plan on using this with, with young children and you think that they're just going to get click happy, okay, and you don't want them to be able to just click through, what you, what you can do is you can click your, your shape here and you can right click and link again. And all you're going to do is you're just going to link it to the same slide. So if I link this to slide number two, which is it's, it's, it's itself, this is the slide that I'm actually on. Um, I go to present. If I click anywhere else, it's just gonna keep me on the same exact slide. Okay, it's kind of like uh, one of my subscribers had said it, it's kind of like uh, lamination for Google Slides. Okay, so here you have the enter button. That's the only thing on that slide now that will take me to where I need to go. Okay, so we're just gonna take that out of present mode for a second. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to my menu. So you see here, and just to keep myself organized, if, if this button here was pink, the slide that it took me to, for to go back to the menu, I just kept the button the same color. You can do any colors, themes, whatever that you want. Okay, like I said, I just kind of liked it to be organized and that's the way that I did it. Okay, so then from here, um, we'll, we'll go to slide number four because contact information is the first thing. So then for here, all I did was if I wanted to make sure that I had a button on each slide to bring me back to the menu, again, you look here and it says that it's linked to slide number three. And if you look over here on the left, slide number three is my menu. Okay, and that's what I did for all of them, because even if I come to my homework slide here and I click on this, they'll all bring me back to slide number three. Okay, um, just really quick, if you're not sure for the permission slips, all I did in order to have that linked was I went to the doc itself. And this is just taking a second to open, I apologize. I went to share. And then when once this box is, is finished loading, you'll see down here it says copy link. You just want to make sure that it says anyone on the internet with this link can view. You want to make sure that that's, that's in view only mode. You don't want people making uh, changes to, to your documents. And then I just copied the link. I can close that now. Okay. And then when I clicked on here, uh, you can either right, oh, sorry, you can either right click and go to link, or you can come up here and just go to insert link. And then this box is going to pop up and that's where you paste and then hit apply. And that's how. And I did the same exact thing with my, my uh, Sign Up Genius, okay? I just did the same thing. I went to the website, I copied the link, and then I linked that right to here, okay? And again, like I said, if, if you're realizing that something's not working, you're realizing that 
they're taking you to the wrong slides or it's literally just advancing to the next slide, it's probably because you either haven't linked your shape, your transparent shape to itself, to its own slide, or your button is not in the front. Always wanna make sure the button is right in the front. Okay, and then everything else, whether you add your bitmojis or any other graphics or pictures, images, they go behind your transparent color. So I, I you know, I happen to use mine to make this a little more creative. Uh, if it's if you have a background that you want to use and that's it, then you're happy with it. Just make sure you put a 100% clear image behind the button and in front of everything else, so that you make sure that your app works properly. Now, um, like I said, uh, you can see on my menu here that I have contact information, homework, important dates, permission slips, event signups, and school websites. Some other ideas that you can use is if you have um, links to websites that you frequently use with your students, maybe PBS Kids or Starfalls or Khan Academy for mathematics, you can make a slide and you can um, title one of these buttons links and then you can have links on one of your slides okay um, if you have maybe if you do student of the week you can take a picture of the student or ask the student to send a picture and you can write a little blurb about students another one that you can do is a newsletter so if you have a class newsletter that you do weekly or monthly you can have one of your buttons linked to the class newsletter if you have your school calendar or your personal Google calendar for, for work and you want parents to be able to, you know, access that to see when you're available, you can do that as well. Um, if you have classroom rules or, or class policies, school policies that you wanted to add, that can also be one of the buttons. And like I said before, instead of permission slips, you can just have general forms. This way parents are, are able to print out any forms that may have gotten misplaced because we know that, that happens with students all the time. So I hope that you loved the video, okay? All I ask is that you give a thumbs up to the video, you like it, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit that little notification bell on my page. This way you will have access and you will be notified when I upload new videos. Take care, guys.